Hey guys, what's up? Hope everybody's doing good. Um, I'm going to kind of just jump into it, guys. I want to give you guys an update. Um, give you guys, let you know, guys know what's going on. Um, I'm going to be uh, doing a live stream here in about 15 minutes over on the lifeboat. There's Tommy right now. Good to see everybody in here. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and jump into it, guys. Um, so we can get the information out here. I, I want to give you guys an update like I promised you guys. So um, here we are. <laughs> anyway, the shoe in residence, guys. Uh, nothing going on here. Um, can I uh, uh, get a fire for fire? Okay. Thanks, George. Appreciate you, bud. Hey, Cindy, what's up? Okay. So anyway, you got the information here with the, the Schumann, and there's not really a whole lot going on. Um, obviously, you can see that. There's a little bit of uptick here. Just a little bit. Not much going on. Not much at all. Um, but, you know, that is what it is. That doesn't mean there ain't things going on, and I'm going to explain. <laughs> um, like I said, guys, if stuff happens, I will come on here and give you guys updates. And uh, we've got flares. Now, um, multiple flares. These are C-class flares. Um, they're not huge, but they are significant enough to give us an uptick in uh, x-ray. Um, you can see our geomagnetic activity. That isn't really um, bumping up hardly at all. Um, it is what it is. Uh, we're, we're anticipating a solar wind stream, a, a, a coronal hole. Uh, yeah, coronal hole, wind stream. Here in the next few hours, uh, you know, whether or not that puts us up into um, storm level, you know, it can sometimes and sometimes it just won't. You can see up here they're forecasting a three and a four on the KP. Um, you know, it's not really all that high, but there it is, right? Um, and then, you know, you got the sixth and the seventh here. They're not forecasting a whole lot there, but that could change. It just depends on what what's going on with these eruptions, Okay. Um, because there is there's some stuff going on on the sun and um, we'll give you the first look at the sun here and all the activity guys um, the stuff we're going to notice on earth is coming from these holes right the flares are actually over here they're blowing off that side of the sun which is you know it is what it is uh they're actually it's crested the limb already so the fact that we're getting x-ray from it lets you know that that stuff does reach around uh, you can see here, this is Lasco C3. Um, this is the zoomed out version of what I usually show you guys. Uh, you can see the eruptions here. Uh, not a, You know, again, guys, this isn't massive. All right. These are significant flares, but they're, not, none of this stuff is aimed at us. Okay. Even though we got the x-rays from it, doesn't mean that we're going to get any kind of geomagnetic activity. Okay. That would come from the eruption from the uh, CME if there was one with it and there was and it's not facing us so um, we'll look at the auroras here in a minute but this right here is the absorption and you can definitely see where all day today we've had off and on flares from this uh, from this sunspot okay and as you can see there see it just bumping up now notice that again that where, where this is hit and that's the day side of the planet okay this nighttime here, and as we, you know, as we crested in here. Now, there was a couple, and you can see how this thing, it, it did. This thing has been flaring now for a good day. Um, see? Definitely an uptick. Uh, you can I was talking about how low the x-ray production was, remember? So, if we were here, and then we got a flare like this, it would th these would be M-class flares. Okay? Um, so, that's, you know, that is what it is. Now, okay, so we'll go over here to uh, the Discover data. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time here because there's not much to show you. Hey, Christine, good to see you. Um, hope you're getting settled into your new house there. And, uh, yeah, anyway, you got the BZ, which is the angle of which the uh, solar weather gets in. And we look for negative six or bigger, nothing going on there. Ain't even touching that. You got the density here, right around nine. Uh, four is what we consider normal. But you can get hits with less density and, and some with more that don't do anything. So uh, you can see how the solar wind is pretty variable right here. It actually dropped out pretty decent and then popped back up. Uh, three to 500 kilometers a second is what we consider normal there. Um, nothing much going on there. I'm not even going to show you this right here because I'm just going to show you the, the uh, static pictures here because there's nothing to show. Nothing's going on right now as far as hitting our magnetic field. Um, at least nothing as of note. 
Uh, here's the aurora. And um, so what we're looking at here, again, on the left is the North Pole. On the right is the South Pole. Again, you know, as we start getting this magnetic activity, you're going to see here at the end of this time lapse right here, it's, you're going to see a little bit of an uptick. Why is that? Well, if we go back here, you can see how the KP was bumping up because we were getting geomagnetic activity. So that's why. Um, again, but it's nothing as of note. Now, the, you know, back when we had that G3 storm, they actually had Aurora down in New Mexico. I'm not sure if you guys were aware of that, but um, that happened. And, you know, it's not really all that uncommon. It is rare, but it's not, you know, it happens more times than what you would think. Uh, it did reach down that far south. And, you know, you can get Aurora anywhere on the planet, guys. Um, matter of fact, when you get the bigger geomagnetic storms, the people that are actually that see Aurora the most, like we're living close to the poles, have to actually look the, the opposite direction. Instead of looking north or straight up, they got to look south. Or if you're in the southern hemisphere, it would be the opposite. Um, because the auroras start producing in a different location. They get down further in the latitudes. So that that's that's the reason for that. Um, here's the SDO. This is a picture of the sun from our perspective. Okay. Um, this is, uh, again, this is the 94 angstrom. And here you're going to see the flares right here. Okay, that was the first one. You'll get another one here at the end. See that? Okay. You can see how that thing's flaring all, all, all day long. Now, you can also tell how that's, a, that's actually on the other side of the sun. It's crested the limb already. But those x-rays are still able to get to us. So most likely if that was like right here in front of us, um, it would probably be registering a lot more x-ray production, which would make it a, a larger flare. So, yeah. Um, so this is SDO. And this is, uh, not SDO, I'm sorry, this is SOHO. This is Lasco C2. This is the, the zoomed-in version of what I showed you guys earlier, and you can definitely see, okay? There were eruptions with this with these flares, but they're all going that direction, okay? So there's really not much there to show you. Um, let me, uh, I do want to show you this real quick. Okay, this is the CME tracker. This is NASA's version of the Enlil Spiral. Hey, Wolfie. Um, you can definitely see how it's blowing off there. There were two more before this. Okay, but they were all blowing that way. So, you know, imagine if that was right in front of us. This wouldn't be catastrophic, but it wouldn't be, it wouldn't really be anything huge. But it would give us, an, you know, a bump in geomagnetic activity. If that thing was to hit us, it's really not that strong a one. Okay, I know it looks really big and wide, and it is. That's a wide one. But sometimes the more condensed versions will impact us harder, right? So if we go over here to uh, thespaceletter.com, please go over here and give these guys some love. They do a great job. I say it every every live stream, and I will continue to do so. They're talking about the same thing I just said here, right? And also, they, they, they're they talking about the Antarctic solar eclipse. Um, that happened, and uh, it happened today. So, yeah. Um, also, on the subject of Earth tilt, uh, if you go back and you look, and you, you can go back to as far as you want. I actually had a textbook from 1967, I believe. Um, and they were showing future eclipses. You can predict it. We know when these things are going to happen, right? And we know what position you're gonna, they're going to be in. So if you go back and look at that textbook, it shows this particular, it shows all the, they forecasted out like over 100 years in this textbook. and um, it's still in the same spot. So what I'm saying is if, if our earth had tilted more than what we're supposed to be at, if something had happened a few years back, these things would be in a totally different spot. We wouldn't be experiencing this is what I'm trying to say. Um, the eclipses and stuff would still be happening, but they would be happening at different spots and different times because the earth would have tilted more. Um, but again, I just, I just throw that out there because, it's just another prover that, you know, in my opinion, through my research, I don't think we've tilted more than what we should have um, or what would be considered normal or whatever. 
Um, but here, uh, look, they're talking about the Royals over New Mexico. So, yeah, I'm not going to show it. Guys, go over there and give them some love. They do a, an awesome job. Um, we are starting to see just a little bit of noctilucent clouds. What are noctilucent clouds? Meteor dust in, higher up in our atmosphere, right? And what happens is water vapor gets up there and it freezes. So it happens in the summertime in each hemisphere. And these are actually late this year, okay? So, yeah. But they are starting to show up now. So I'll be I'll be showing you guys this more often, okay? Um, Near-Earth objects, obviously those are fireball reports. And again, we were in a more active area of space. There were a couple that came within the distance of the moon here today, right? Um, so they just seen this one, I, I believe. This one was put on there today. So that's within one lunar distance. It's 0.8. So, hey, Ribby. But anyway, um, so this is the other thing, guys. Look, lots of earthquakes going on. I mean, lots. We got sixes and fives all over the planet right now. Okay, this is it's active. So we had some bigger ones down here in the Sandwich Islands. We had some over here. We had one on Easter Island. That was like a 6-4. We had some over here in Japan and some that's not here right now. So earthquake activity is definitely on the uptick. Um, so I just wanted to throw that out there. Um, as far as the radiation, guys, um, you know, we talked about the radiation stuff before, right? And, and we're going to go over that in more detail in a future live stream. Um, but what happens is the radiation's here, right? So you would think that when we get a CME that it would lower or, or raise the radiation in our atmosphere. Actually, that's not what happened. And I'll go over the, 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 the cannibal CME that we had a few weeks back, our radiation dropped when that hit because it was dragging radiation and pushing it through. And we'll go more into that because that's what, something they do over here in, at spaceweather.com. They'll send these balloons up and they get radiation readings from uh, right here. Here's that CME impact. It dropped. See how far it dropped? So just keep that in mind. And just because we're getting hit with, by stuff from the sun doesn't mean that that means our radiation is going to rise. It actually lowers. So when this happened, they 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 launched a balloon and they were getting readings. So that's that's a legit thing. So, but yeah, uh, we'll go over that more in detail here. In, you know, in in the future stream here. Um, but I do want to uh, show you this real quick. Um, let me get to this oh, sorry about this guys i should have had this already pulled up and i didn't guys i'm going to be going live here on the on on the lifeboat here and like right after i get off this stream okay uh, matter of fact i'm going to click on this i'm going to share this link guys um if you could please come over here and check us out um you know it's just it's a great channel um, we're talking about recovery, and if, if you don't know much about, you know, recovery, or if you if you're in recovery, if you need help or whatever, it's it's a very great place to come. Okay, um, no, no judgment there at all ever. It's a safe place. You can come talk and do whatever you need to do. Um, you know, and we give you guys the avenue. We 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 have a topic. We're talking about our brain and recovery tonight. So. Um, you know, come visit us over here. I'm getting ready to, uh, again, I'm going over there right now, as a matter of fact, as soon as I get off this stream. Um, but I did promise you guys, uh, you know, updates <clears throat> daily. Um, I'm going to try to, you know, follow through with that. And um, that's what I'm doing. So I know this was a, was, a, was a quick one, but I will be coming back either tomorrow with a longer one. Uh, I want to go into some more detail on the radiation thing. So, uh so, yeah, guys, um, so come on over there and uh, check us out at the lifeboat. And I'm heading over there now. Here's the link again. You guys want to come over there? God bless. Yahushua saves. And as always, guys, you can drink this Kool-Aid.